students, welcome to Year 11 Earth and Environmental Science. This is Module 1 on Earth's resources and now we're moving into Video 8, looking at a couple of ways in which we can use to age the Earth. And in this first one, we're going to focus on zircon crystals. Our learning intention is that you can analyze evidence of the Earth's age, including the formation and age of zircon crystals. So zircon is going to be our focus for this video. So you need to be able to describe what a zircon crystal is and how they might be formed. And to infer from that um, what we can conclude about the age of the Earth from zircon crystals. So we don't know a lot about zircon crystals, but we do know they are amongst the oldest crystals on Earth, and as a result, they've been used to age the oldest parts of the Earth. Now, hopefully, if you see something like this, you would understand that that means they must be part of the continental crust, not of the oceanic crust. We know that the oceanic crust is cycling, uh, is not older than about 250 odd million years old, but the continental crust is low density. It continues to sit above the oceanic crust and weather. And one of the important things about zircon crystals is that they are very hard and chemically inert. And as a result, they are very resistant to weathering. So we find zircon, this um, form of zircon, the form of zircon that we find most often is this zirconium silicate um, and it is most commonly found in granitic rocks. Now it's not just found in igneous rocks, it's also because of the nature of this particular crystal. Um, when uh, igneous rocks are broken down, we can find the same sort of crystals being incorporated into part of sedimentary rock and potentially into metamorphic rock as well. So zircon is, is quite um, uh, ubiquitous in one sense, but the problem with it is, uh, is that we usually only find it in very small amounts. Now how it got here is, the, is probably the bigger question. Uh, there has been some stuff in um, about 2014-15 that suggests um, that the before the Earth's atmosphere had the high levels of oxygen and hence uh, the ozone layer, it was being bombarded in a similar way to the way the moon was. So we were getting a lot of extraterrestrial material falling to the Earth. And at about that time, this is where we're finding a lot of these uh, zircon crystals uh, date back to. So we're finding very old ages for zircon crystals. We're uh, concluding that maybe they were part of um, or, or created through some of the early impact events that occurred between uh, extraterrestrial material and the surface of the Earth, certainly before we had an atmosphere that was going to actually break down a lot of those uh, extraterrestrial materials before they reached um, the Earth. So zircon is very important. Um, it's important because it's part of the continental crust. It's important because it's found in a lot of different types of rock material. And it's important because it can be used to age the earth. This has also happened here in Australia, uh, around the uh, Jack Hills region in Western Australia. We've actually found some zircons that have been dated to about 4.4 4 .4 billion years old. And hence that represents the oldest crystalline material on the earth and that's why zircon crystals are so important while we're talking about them. There have been more reliable dates that have been found uh, for different types of zircons um, that aren't quite as old, about four billion years or a little, little more than that. And also from the shrimp techniques, the sensitive high resolution iron microprobe, we've been able to uh, look at uranium lead dating methods to give us a bit of an idea about the age of these zircon crystals. Now one of the things that we will look at in a subsequent video is this whole idea of radioactive dating but um, to give you a quick overview for now the purpose of radioactive uh, dating is to look at the comparison between a parent isotope and a daughter isotope. So one of the things we know is that carbon-14 is quite a rare isotope. Carbon-12 is the most common isotope of carbon. But carbon-14 does exist, but it's unstable. It breaks down through radioactive decay and it forms nitrogen-14. 
which means in this particular case, carbon-14 would be the parent and nitrogen-14 would be the daughter. Now, the problem with carbon-14 in terms of the dating um, uh, isotope is that it only has a half-life of 5,700-odd years. And generally speaking, 10 half-lives is about as many as you can look at before the amount of um, original parent material is so small as to be uh, almost non-detectable. So that means you can only age rocks or artefacts with carbon dating up to a maximum of about 57, 60,000 years. That's no good for the age of the Earth, and that's one of the reasons why we use uranium and lead. In this case, the uranium is the parent and lead is the daughter, and the uranium uh, breakdown, radioactive breakdown cycle half-life is much, much longer um, than that for carbon. So uh, uranium is used as one of our uh, methods for dating extremely old uh, material. Now, radioactive decay basically works by the fact that the parent is going to start to break down very quickly. So a half-life is just an expression that says how long it takes, or the amount of time that it takes for half of the radioactive atoms to decay. So basically, whatever the half-life after that period of years, decades, millennia, uh, or millions of years, you only have half of the material left. You have 50% of the original um, parent atoms. In the same period of time, you would then go down to 25%. In the same period of time, half of that again, which would be 12.5%, and so on and so on. At the same time, the amount of daughter atoms are accumulating. So after one half-life, you have 50% of your parent left. You have 50%, which are now daughters. In one more half-life, you're down to 25% of the parent. You're up to 75% of the daughter. So there's this straight one-to-one um, -one ratio of parent to daughter. And it's the comparison of these different uh, atoms or isotopes that allows us to do some dating. But um, radioactive dating is quite a complex uh, process and probably we really need to devote uh, a little bit of discussion uh, for radioactive dating to its own video. And so we'll do that. Uh, coming up. Thanks for watching.